Well, this is it. Episode number 300. Yay! In celebration of this, I am hosting a contest. And there are many great prizes that you could win, such as an iPad, an iPod Touch, a Kindle Fire, and many more in this list here. And thank you for the sponsors for uh, contributing to those prizes here. To enter this contest, all you have to do is submit a pull request to any GitHub project and then email the URL to entry at railscast.com before December 31st, 2011. And you can submit a maximum of five times to increase your chances of winning. Now, if you don't know how to submit a pull request, have no fear, because this is exactly what I will be covering here in this episode. GitHub makes it incredibly easy to contribute to open source. Here I want to show you an example of contributing by submitting a pull request to this project right here, VCR. Now I covered this gem back in episode number 291. It's an awesome way to record HTTP interactions and then replay them back for fast tests. And uh, the reason I chose to feature this gem here is because Myron Marston, the author here, is very good about keeping up with contributions. Notice that the open pull requests are zero, even though it's a popular gem, and the issues are just seven. I wish I could say the same for my projects, but I'm working on that. Anyway, let's say there's an issue with this gem that we would like to contribute a patch to. The first step is to go to the issue tracker and just make sure that this issue has not already been addressed. So so do a search inside of here and see if it comes up. It's also a good idea to search the mailing list if there is one for the project. And if your contribution that you're planning on doing is a big change in the project, it's also a good idea to first discuss it to uh, determine if it's truly needed and the proper way to go about it. Well, once you're ready to contribute, the next step is to fork the project. So I'll click on fork here and fork to Ryan B. And then once it's forked to your account, you could just get the URL to clone the repo. So I'll run git clone here to pull that down. Now, one of the first things I like to do is to check out what branches are available by calling git branch r to find all the branches on the remote repository. One thing I notice here is that there is a branch for the stable release of version one, which is actually currently the most recent version of the gem. Uh, the master branch happens to point to version two, which is currently in pre-release. So that is something to keep in mind and watch out for that the version of the gem that you are using may be different than what you're working on in the code. Now, when setting up the development environment for a project, it's a good idea to check out the documentation. In this case, there's a section on development inside of the readme here, and it's great to see that pull requests are very welcome. And we also need to make sure that it has full test coverage here. So the first step is to make sure that the tests are fully passing before we actually change any code. Now, I don't see any instructions here on getting the test passing, but if we look up here, you can see one thing that's very promising is that it looks like the tests are passing on Travis CI, so it shouldn't be very hard to set up. And there is a gem file inside the project, so it looks like it's using Bundler for dependencies. So here we can install all the dependencies with a simple call of bundle install. And it looks like there was an error here trying to install the RBFS event gem. And this is sort of to be expected because every system is set up a little bit differently and you can expect to run into a couple of hiccups when you're trying to set up a project in your environment. In this case, I just did a quick Google and it turns out the problem is quite specific to my setup here where I use the GCC installer instead of the full Xcode install on OS X. It turns out that this problem is fixed in RBFS event, but it's not in a stable release yet, it's in a pre-release. So to get that, we can go inside of the VCR gem file and temporarily set our uh, version number here for uh, RBFS event to the pre-release version number so that it uses that temporarily until the official release is out. So with that change, let's try running the bundle command again here and see if that works. And it looks like that worked. All those dependencies here are now installed. So now it's time to try running the tests. And that is often set as the default rake task. So usually you can just run rake without any command and it will run the tests. But uh, rake in my system is set up to alias to bundle exec rake. So you probably want to uh, run that full command here. So that way it ensures to use bundler. So it looks like that's working here. We got our tests running and it's kind of a cool interface. This is known as foobar. It's called F-U-U-B-A-R, just presents your tests in a nice output. And so it looks like we have a few pending results in our spec, but that's fine. Everything else passes. So now it's just running the uh, Cucumber features here. And we get one failure here. It says, uh, no such file to load spec. 
so it looks like we were missing some kind of dependency that Bundler didn't set up. Now I did a bit of investigating and it turns out that this project uses git submodules. So to get this fully working we have to call git submodule init followed by git submodule update and that will copy over that submodule repository for us. So now with rspec1 cloned in here, it looks like that was our problem, so let's try running our specs again and see if they all pass. And it looks like it all passes now. Yay! So we ran into a couple of hiccups getting these tests to pass, but we finally made it. And that's really to be expected because everyone's development environment setup is a little bit different. But it would have saved us some time if there was some better documentation here on getting the development uh, projects set up. So that is going to be our first pull request to add some better documentation to the readme to set up our environment. It turns out there's already a wiki page dedicated to contributing to the VCR project here, but it doesn't contain a whole lot of information, only to run the bundle install command and the rake command, but we need to do a bit more to get it to set up on our system. So I'm going to expand this first and then we can link to this page from our readme. I'll first update this here. All right, there we go. This now contains a section on setting up the git submodule and uh, mentions what to do if you run into an error while running the bundle install command. So with these changes, we can now uh, submit a pull request, which adds a link to the readme for this contributing guide. So before I make any changes in the code, let's first make sure I have a clean working directory here by calling git status. And it looks like we did modify that gem file. So let's revert that change by calling git checkout and that way we're just stuck with our clean uh, directory here. It's also a good idea to set up a separate git branch for each pull request you want to make. So let's make a separate branch here called a readme contributing link, like that. And then we could just make our change, which is going to be inside of the readme down in the development section here. I'm just going to add a bullet point to this list here, and I'll just make it say, uh, see the contributing guide for instructions on running the specs and features. And then once you're done, you can run git diff to uh, check that patch and everything looks good. So now we can commit it. And let's say uh, adding contributing link to readme. There we go. Next, we need to push this branch here up to our remote repository. So we can call git push origin and then the name of the branch. And that way it will add this branch on our GitHub repository. So now when we visit our forked repository on GitHub, you can see that we can change our branch to the one we just added, which is readme contributing link. And then we can click on pull request here to submit a pull request to the original owner. And then we can uh, just fill this detail in here. There we go, that looks good. And then we can briefly check the uh, commit and changes and that all looks good as well. So it's time to send off this pull request. And there it is. So that's how you submit a pull request to contribute to a project on GitHub. And if it gets accepted, our little change will make it easier for the next person who wants to contribute. So now it's your turn. I encourage you to find your favorite GitHub project and try to get that running on your local system. And if you run into any problems, that makes a great first pull request to contribute that back to the project. And that way you're paving the way for future contributors. And don't forget, you have a chance to win some really cool prizes if you submit that pull request URL to entry at railscast.com. For more information about the contest, be sure to check out railscast.com slash contest. In the pro episode this week, I will show you how to create a Ruby gem by extracting logic out of an existing Rails application. I will also show you how to test this using RSpec and how to make a rail tie and more. To watch that episode and all other pro and revised episodes, just head on over to railscast.com slash pro and then sign up there for just $9 per month.